One of the things that makes Nigel Richards the greatest Scrabble player ever is his ability to make plays that nobody else can. Sometimes those plays are ridiculously long words, sometimes they're absurdly complicated endgame sequences, and other times they're dazzlingly creative setup plays, where Nigel deliberately creates a lucrative scoring spot well suited to his highest scoring letters. The opportunity to make a really good setup play usually appears just once in a while. In the game you're about to see, Nigel makes not one, not two, but three setup plays in a single game. But while Scrabble players love a good setup, did Nigel actually take it too far? It's four days into the prestigious King's Cup tournament in Thailand. Nigel's round 28 opponent is one of his strongest rivals, American Grandmaster Jesse Day. Nigel and Jesse were the finalists in both the 2018 and 2019 World Championships, and although Nigel won both matches, Jesse's 17-18 and 18 record against Nigel is one of the very best of anyone to play him that many times. Games between these two are the Scrabble equivalent of must-see TV. Nigel goes first and plays Howl for 20 points, saving his S and T as hooks. Jesse strikes back quickly with an obscure bingo of Yielden. This word plays on either side of Howl, but Jesse realizes that the scoring spot created by the right side placement will allow Nigel to land damaging plays with heavy tiles like the X, W, and V, and he wisely elects to play it on the left side with much less dangerous overlaps. Nigel draws the ugly UW combination and dumps them both with WUD for 28, holding the powerful ESRT. Jesse draws 5 E's and plays his top scoring move of G for 21, setting up the Eagle Hook. Nigel draws the first blank and gets there first with tie ridges, hitting two double word scores and retaking the lead. Jesse quickly answers with ZA for 44, and Nigel draws both the Q and X together after his bingo. Typically, with multiple high-scoring tiles on your rack, you'll look to unload one and then the other in a two-turn sequence. And Nigel has some solid options here, including Dixie for 28, setting up a nice spot to play QU words, forming Chi, or Quid for 33, dumping his Q for a strong score. Rather than play either of those, he plays the totally insane looking D for just 12 points. This move is vintage Nigel, setting up a gigantic spot for his Q to play for approximately 100 points with a wide variety of draws. Not only does Nigel hold both of the two most dangerous tiles to use in the spot he's created, but Jesse's last two plays were G and Za using relatively few tiles. It's likelier than usual that Jesse has good bingo tiles and less likely that he has high scoring tiles to use there. And if Jesse bingos, it won't be in the bottom left, giving Nigel a free shot at cashing his setup. Jesse can actually block here, but he'll have to sacrifice a lot of points to do it with something like Gave. Instead, he chooses to play a more normal move, the highest scoring option of Veggie for 28. Sacrificing points to block would have worked better, as Nigel connects on his draw and plays Choir for a massive 99 points. Jesse does answer back with the excellent counter of Opera for 43 with 4 overlaps, while Nigel draws 5 consonants and faces this position. There's a good spot for the X in the lower left, but he lacks the right vowels to use it there, so he elects to make a second setup play. Tomb, scoring very well and making an even better X spot in a different part of the board. Tomb is unquestionably his best move here. Jesse draws an awkward combination of high point tiles and plays Kiff for 37, and Nigel once again cashes his setup for a lucrative score. But Jesse draws the second blank and pulls even with Overact for 82. Up by only two points, most players in Nigel's shoes would look to shed the J, score decently, and stay one step ahead of Jesse on the scoreboard. He has some viable options that accomplish this, including Soju and Gujan. Yet again, he spurns these traditional options for a setup play, this time 
duo for just four points. This move sets up an 81 point joins at a minimum if the spot remains open, and computer analysis loves the idea. A four point play keeping joins isn't typically very strong, but it is on the post duo board with such a heavy spot available. This board is also quite open, with triple word scores in the upper left and middle right to tempt Jesse to leave the spot untouched. But in my opinion, this third setup feels just a bit too extreme. Usually, computer simulation works extremely well to evaluate plays, but in cases like this, it can't be trusted quite as much. To assess your candidate moves, the engine gives your opponent random tiles and automatically plays the move with the best combination of a good score and a good leave. Scrabble players call this equity. The engine then makes the best equity play that you have on your next turn and measures which plays perform best in game score. Let's look at a couple of examples. Let's say Jesse has this rack. The engine believes that Jesse will play fat for 25, but after duo, it's much likelier that he'll play taffia for 24 to block the setup, scoring only one fewer point and keeping an only slightly worse leave. With this rack, the engine believes Jesse will play pwn for 17, keeping his S and great bingo tiles, but again, Jesse is much likelier to play pence, which has similar equity and blocks the big spot. The bottom line is that if Jesse has a reasonable equity play that blocks the J spot, he's going to play it here much more often than the engine expects, making duo considerably less attractive practically. In the actual game, Jesse answers with Yaiti for 45, blocking the setup and seizing command of the game. Nigel's now in a situation where he'll likely need a bingo to catch up and he still holds the J, a terrible bingo tile. He does have an S in hand to pluralize Yaiti, so Nigel changes course and dumps his J for a relatively low score. But Jesse wisely blocks the S hook on Yaiti with his only five letter word from the E of Overact, and Nern for 18. Jesse's block comes just in time as Nigel draws Selena's but can no longer fit it on the board. He plays Sylvan for 27, hoping to draw another bingo, but Jesse hammers the spot with a lucrative underlapping play and Nigel fails to connect. After several more endgame moves, Jesse comes out on top by a score of 464 to 455. Seeing one really creative setup play in a game is rare enough, but three in one game is truly remarkable. Still, whether or not Nigel should have played duo in this game is up for debate. The computer engine loves his choice, but I'm not so sure I do against a human opponent as strong as Jesse Day. As these two players so often do, Nigel and Jesse made the finals of the event, where Nigel once again narrowly came out on top winning the King's Cup for a mind-blowing 15th time. Jesse's clashes with Nigel in recent years have yielded some of the most exciting Scrabble I've ever seen, and this won't be the last video I make of these two legends. So if you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel so you don't miss it when I release more Scrabble content. In fact, when you think about it, this entire video is kind of a setup. Eh, never mind.